G'day YouTubers, this is the addendum to the episode on Day's Gutter and the Blue Hole. My original intention was to have this footage to go into that episode, but weather and other commitments conspired to make sure that that didn't happen. Never mind, we've got it now, and the main purpose of it is to show you the entrance and exits, and particularly to test out the entrance that Navionics auto routing takes you through. Also wanted to get some general shots just of the Day's Gutter area, lovely area for an anchorage. And the fishing's not bad there either, although it's not an area that I've ever targeted for fishing, I just fish when I'm there. Let's start off in the Rouse Channel where the weather was perfect and we had glassed out conditions for going out on that day. Really nice to be out on the water just cruising along in those sort of conditions. The Route Navionics Plots is just to the south of Rouse Gutter and it is fairly shallow through there. I did a somewhat risky thing when I went through. I went through on a falling tide. That's not something you'd normally want to do, but I had every confidence that I could get through and that if I couldn't, I could recognize the problem before it became critical and back out of there. As it turned out, I didn't need to worry at all. There was enough water to get through. I wouldn't want to do it any less of a tide because I like to see at least a meter under my transducer. That keeps the propeller well clear of the bottom so that it doesn't stir up any sand or mud. Even though it's not touching, the wash of the propeller will stir the bottom up if it gets near enough. And I like to stay just far enough away that that doesn't happen. So if you're trying to sneak through somewhere very shallow and you've got someone else in the boat with you, get them to keep an eye on the wash and tell you if it starts to show any signs of mud or sand. Once you get a bit more experience, you should be able to just tell by the feel of the boat and the engine. It's hard to say exactly what it is, but something just alerts you that you're starting to get pretty shallow and you need to do something about it. Um, I don't know, just the general feel of it, I guess. Something just feels different, even though nothing's touching the bottom. You just sort of feel that the bottom's there. If you're wanting to try this entry, you need to follow a line that's a bit southeast of the last red beacon in the Rouse Channel and the first red beacon in Days Cutter. So line them up, go a little bit to the southeast of it. And it's not a straight line, you'll need to watch the sandbanks and weave your way through. But you can see from the track that I make, and I'll show you later, the way that I went in. Now there is a better way, and I'll get to that later in the video. One of my subscribers has told me about that. Obviously it's a little bit too complicated for Navionics to follow. And last of all, do watch your tide if you're going to try this, because I think on a dead low tide there's every chance that there won't be enough water there to get through. When you're approaching the area and you're about to leave the Rouse Channel to cross the sandbanks, I suggest you zoom right in on your chart plotter. If you've got the route plotted, it's there as a guide. Do not attempt to follow it exactly watch the water, watch the banks and work your way through visually. The maps aren't all that accurate either, so don't rely on them to show you where the sandbanks are going to be exposed at low tide. They are almost certainly not absolutely correct in that respect, so the maps themselves should also be ignored. This is an exercise in visual navigation through shallow water. Slow the boat right down so you've got plenty of time to react and if things start to go wrong, they'll go wrong slowly and give you a little bit of time to do something about it. If you're going through very shallow water and you haven't been through it before, just remember you cannot go too slow, but you can go too fast. Now I don't want to harp on this subject too much, but you'll understand just how critical it is a little bit later in the video when we're going up the Henderson Channel and it is even shallower. It's getting shallow now. Still got high feet, but you can see the water on either side is shallow. I'm going to slow us down a bit more in a second and see if we can sneak through. I think we can get over it. There's deeper water just over there. But you wouldn't want to do this on low tide, just for sure. So, yep. The conclusion is, yes, you can get through here, but 
No, I like my supplement way better. And I think I'll be using that in the future. Yeah, it should start to drop deeper now. Yes, there we go, it's starting to get deeper. So just scraped over that. Down to about three and a half feet, which is about four, no, 1.1 metres. I don't like to go any shallower than a metre under the uh, transducer, so yeah. Got in, but not a recommended passage. This slide shows you the way that one of my subscribers has suggested is better and from what I saw when I was over there I think he's quite correct. I think it is a much better way than the way that Navionics plotted for me. It takes you in through Brown's gutter and out Black gutter into Day's gutter. And going this way takes you into the go slow zone so make sure you don't leave a wake. It'll have to slow down. It is going to be shallow from what I saw but not as shallow as the way Navionics took me. But you're going to be going slow just the same because it's the Turtle and Dugong go slow area. Don't get caught because they do have radar guns on the water. Please will book you. And I think everyone will agree that it's better to spend your money on bait and petrol than to put it into the government coffers. I don't know if you can see as clearly on the video as I can with the Polaroid sun is on, but the water's pretty clear, you can see the bottom, beautiful over here, just beautiful. Oh, I think I saw a crab on the bottom there. And deeper now, a bit harder to see the bottom here. A little bit murky probably from the rain we've had, usually clearer than this, so it used to be. The rain going down over there by the looks of it, now that dark cloud. How magnificent is this? Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. If I can hold the camera steady enough, we're going to zoom in on this, but a little out of those crazy wind turbines on top there. Now, I know it was calm coming across. It's a really nice day, but she's like glassy in here too, and even if the wind comes up a bit, she'll stay glassy in here further up. I don't know if I got it when I came in on the video, but the gutter bar's just back there where all those baits are in the water. Just right on that point there. I hope you can see that in the camera, like I can see it. There's fish down there. You can see them whiting, just swimming around. <laughs> Shells on the bottom. And was that a squid I saw? I think it might have been. A little light down there. So we got off to a really early start that morning, so my wife did her usual thing after a really early start. She went down the cabin and went to sleep. So I was by myself. I had a wander around Day's gutter for a little while, just exploring it and having a look to see what I could find on the sounder while I waited for her to wake up. During that exploration, I decided that I'd show you what the drop-off is like in front of the gutter bar. It's very much like Peel Island. You've got a long area of fairly shallow sandbar and then a steep drop-off to the deeper water. Back in the day, I just took the tinny in and I don't recall ever having much of an issue getting onto the beach. It was about half tide when we were here on this day, so we could have driven straight into the beach. I haven't been here since I owned the big boat, and at low tide I think you had to sneak in up around the sandbar a little bit to the north, and there's a deeper area closer to the beach, but I could be mistaken. I have shown you where the gutter bar is, and I'm sure that if you want to visit it badly enough, you will figure a way to get into it, even if it is a bit shallow. Let's try and give you an idea how quickly it's dropped full, if we can see through the water enough. We're in pretty shallow now, a bit shallower than I normally like to be, just over two feet under the transducer, and we are dropping. There we go. You can see how quickly that drops there on the screen. Yeah, see how quickly that dropped off there? My wife woke up in time to have some lunch and have a little bit of a look at today's gutter, and then it was time to head back. 
I wanted to go out Henderson's gutter just to see what it was like these days. I'd been up at Natinny quite a bit to go fishing in the Blue Hole when we were anchored in the big boat down at Day's gutter. But it's marked variously on the maps these days as no longer navigable or shoaling to less than 0.5 metres at low tide. Either way, it's going to be a challenge to get through, but I thought I could do it. This time, I did the sensible thing because it was very questionable. I went very close to low tide so that there wasn't a lot left for the tide to drop and if I did get stuck, I wouldn't have to wait for hours to get off because the tide would already be on its way back in. I had determined that if I did get stuck and I had to wait for the tide to plate me off, I would return to Dave's gutter and go home that way. I suppose I was being a bit cocky, but I did think that I could get through in my boat. So we set off. I took it pretty slow, and as it progressed, I got slower and slower until about halfway along, and I did the last half of the trip pretty much at an idle because the channel was very hard to pick out. Anyway, I'll talk about that more in the video as we progress. Heading up through Henderson's gutter, it's pretty shallow, but so far so good. I've seen a couple of stingrays take off the bottom. That's about all. Oh, shit. About the same time I realised that I'd made a mistake and was heading up the wrong channel, I was overtaken by some jet skis. Judging from the way they came, they might have made the same mistake, but it wasn't important for them because they only need a few inches of water to get through anyway. Not long after the jet skis went past, I was overtaken by a boat going nearly flat out. For a couple of wild seconds I was tempted to follow him, given that he was going flat out, maybe he knew the way through. But I'm glad I didn't because thinking back on it, I think he had a jet boat which wouldn't need much water to get through anyway. And just because he was going fast didn't necessarily mean he knew what he was doing. Oh, see you off again. I'm in Henderson's gutter. It's very, very shallow. I'm just trying to ease my way through it. We're only in about two feet of water. Yeah. Oh, I see, someone asked if we can get through, if we can get through here. I just said, well, I'm not real sure because it's, it's many years since I've been through. That bloke there behind us, he was the guy that was talking to us. He took a wrong turn. He looks like he's come back to follow us again. He ended up, he went ahead after he talked to me. This section of track here where it comes in close to Crab Island and then starts to move away over towards Morton is the most difficult part of it. It's very narrow, very shallow, and I did have trouble picking up just where the deepest section was. I think it, it was shallow, but I thought it was a bit deeper than this back then. Back at Dave's gutter. Down there. We're, uh, we'll come out into the blue hole if we make it all the way through. Hmm? Yeah, it's just a, just a deep hole. Once we get through that, we'll be back in the bay. Just wondering whether we're going to get any further. I'm going to, I'll go this way a bit, and if we don't find some deeper water, we might have to turn back. Because it is. Okay, we did 
once or twice, you do it. Thanks. There's a few boats anchored up in the blue hole. Not a bad anchorage. I used to come up here when I was anchored down at Dave's Gutter. I used to bring the tinny up to uh, fish for whiting. Did you get them? Hmm? Did you get them? Yeah, that was a good, good fishing spot back then. Well, I don't know. People have been telling me on uh, the internet that up at the Sandhills is better whiting fishing nowadays. I don't know why it should be, because this used to be a terrific spot. Yes, beautiful, those sand hills. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, where are you? Well, uh, moving on, what way? How good is this? I mean, Whit Sundays are nice too, but uh, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple of blokes at Dave's Gunner when you were asleep had uh, kayaks strapped. They had bigger boats, but they had kayaks strapped to the rail yeah. as well as their tender. Well, I hadn't seen it anywhere. I just thought, "Is that rude when you do that?" Yeah. Yes, and uh, I have to get a day out you know, somewhere nice and calm for you to have yeah. a bit of a paddle around. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the, uh, I mean, it's, what, is it wood? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I think so, yes. Yeah, you see the wood, the vines of the yeah, plants? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I wonder if that's our friend. No, it wouldn't be. What are those? Oh, fishing rods. Like a fishing rod set. I don't know what it's called. Well, they're outriggers, actually. Oh. You drop them out and you put your fishing line on the end of it and when you drop it out, your rod's still in the boat. Your line's well out to the side. Oh, look at him, he's out on his duckboard. <laughs> oh, goodness! He's another nice big boat. Anyway, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. He's a brave soul. I don't know why he's still on the duckboard. I'm worried about sharks coming up. Yeah. Well, that's probably, a, must be a hydraulic platform these lowers down to all his, de his dinghy up on, so he's just yeah. lowered it down to sit on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're in deep water now. You, you know how to get out of here? You know how to get out? Bit of an exciting passage. <laughs> it was a bit in parts. You know how to get out of here? Yeah, yeah, some beacons you can follow. If you just go down here, you'll see them. Straight through the beacons. It's a narrow passage. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, thanks. Thank see ya. <laughs> Put on the speed once the three of these beacons won't be long before we're in the deeper water. Uh, Unfold it up if we're finished with it. It's easy enough to unfold. Yeah. Yes, it is. It still makes driving a lot easier. Yeah. See the people that had the bike
amazed. I had no idea that this video was going to go so long. I've waffled on a lot and I've put a bit of footage in that probably wasn't necessary, but I sort of found interesting anyway. I hope you've enjoyed it. I do think there was some good information there if you want to go through Henderson's gutter or if you want to get into Day's gutter at all. I haven't been into the southern entry that I used to use in today's gutter, but I really think that's probably the way to go, although the one that my subscriber suggested through Brown's gutter and black gutter is also going to be pretty good by the looks of it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I do apologise that it was so long. It wasn't intended to be. That's just the way it turned out. Hopefully the next video is going to have some fishing in it and some marks that you might be able to use. This one was more about boating and a couple of great anchorages in Day's Gutter and the Blue Hole. Again, thanks for watching. Until next time, good fishing.